Today's buddy review is all about one word, diesel. In fact, two words, two diesel, because we have two new diesel trucks behind us, and I have two buddies to help me with this review. Come on over, buddy. Can I be the first buddy? You're the first buddy. So what are we reviewing today, Andre? Well, this is very exciting because this isn't, hasn't happened before. We have a 2020 GMC Sierra 1584 turbo diesel. Yep. With a three liter, yep. straight six. Yep. And we also have a 2020 Ram Rebel 1500 with a three liter turbo diesel V6. So these are off-road trucks, but they're also diesel powered. Yep, so on this review, we're gonna take them for a ride. We're gonna find out how fast they are from zero to 60 with four people in the cab. Yes. We're gonna see how well they ride. We might go to Snarfs. And at the end of the video, we're gonna let you know whether you should buy them, lease it, rent them, or forget them. So Andre, let's do the walk around with the GMC. I'm excited by this. So this is brand new. 84 has been around, but now it also has the three liter straight six um, turbo diesel Duramax. And I'll open Roma. up. Can you pop the hood? And 84 in GMC speak, it's basically their off-road package. From the factory, the truck sits about two inches higher than a normal truck would be. And I love this color combination, this white with brushed metal, but this is the uh, crown in this uh, jewel because, or the jewel in the crown, because under the hood here is 277 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. You can see the turbocharger is on the side. This is very unique because it's a straight six. It's an engine that big semi-truckers love, that straight six orientation. And you could put a lot of turbocharging in there, your emissions equipment close to the engine. But Andre, if you want the off-roader, the four-wheel drive monster in the Chevy, you gotta go with the GMC because this engine is not available in the Trail Boss. And we don't know why. Many of you have asked us this question, how come the Trail Boss doesn't have a straight six diesel? And we don't, I don't have a good answer from General Motors. Um, so this is what it is. So what makes the AT4 special? Well, it's right here. Look at this, Andre. Red recovery hooks. Yes, but also tires. Yep, it's so, more than that. Let's show them the tires. <laughs> and there's also a surprise buddy, right? In yes, this? Yeah, there's a surprise buddy. We'll get to him in a second. Okay, check out those tires. So, Dura track tires. And actually, this is a 32, approximately from the factory. Like I said, it was a suspension lift. This 84 has a little bit more protection, skid plates on the bottom. So, it's more off-road ready. But this is just more than that. Look at this, look at this badge right here. Yeah, check it out. Carbon Pro, yep, if you go in the back, you're gonna find something I think that's actually really cool in the industry, and that is, well, Andre, why don't you show them? Let's look at the Carbon Pro. Yeah, but before and we, we have, do that, open it up, man. Yeah, this is an accessory, right? Yeah. So they have a tunnel cover, but we need to look inside and see this Carbon Pro. So what this is, is basically compressed carbon. It's basically a composite. Uh, many people say it has a carbon fiber bed. That's not technically true because if you look at uh, supercars and other vehicles using carbon fiber, you can see the weave. This has no weave. It's basically compressed carbon fiber. It's very durable. Uh, Roman, I think you were throwing many, many different things into this to try to dent it. Yeah, I did a video where I actually took a cinder block and I dropped it and it also bounced <laughs> and almost, and almost went, went through the back window. So Toss as high as I can. Here we go. One, two, three. A couple of interesting things about this bed. The creases are all very tight. If you can see, I mean, you can put separate dividers, separators. It has of course a power outlet in here. It's a really wide bed and they put texture in the floor so it's not very slick. I mean, they did a lot of work, but it's part of an 84 package in this case, or it also can be on a Denali and it's not a separate option. You can't just right now click a box and say carbon bed. It has to be wrapped into another package somehow. If you want the off-roader with the diesel and you want the bed, you gotta go GMC. Yes. All right, let's go for a ride and meet our next buddy. Well, guess who's in the truck? Hola, amigos and amigas. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nathan, what's up, dude? What's up? Nathan, what do you think of the interior in our top-of-the-line GMC off-roader? This is the best executed interior that GM has currently. It's sort of no fuss with a little bit of luxury. There are still problems with it. I really don't like the fake carbon fiber that you have over here. Um, but oh, they have carbon inside here, too? Yeah, a little That's bit. That's the sound uh, of plastic. 
Well, there's plastic in all different types of vehicles. I happen to like the setup. I like the switch gear. I like the toggle switches. The size of the screen isn't ridiculously large, which we'll see later on. And I like this. Yes. I yes, men! That's the way that men! you should drive a truck. Yes. This or this. Yeah. I'm not that. Not, not, yeah, no, 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 no. We'll be yelled at. Oh my God, I love yeah, my yeah. hockey puck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's plenty to like in here, but it's not up to the quality of the Ram trucks, which is why Ram's been winning awards and everything else. However, I think these seats are more comfortable. They are more comfortable. I think they're more comfortable than the Rams. Here's a funny oh. thing, Nathan. You know, we bought the Silverado, right? Yeah. Uh, and if you look at the interior of the Rebel that we sold, it's a much nicer interior. It is. But there's something that's just right and basic about this interior that I like, right? It's not fancy. It's not froofy. It just works. Right. It's And I, I like it better than, well, Ford has been doing the same ancient interior forever, and it's kind of all mismatched, and they'll, they'll hopefully the next generation will be much better. But with this interior, this truck, with this setup, this color, everything about this truck, next to the Chevrolet ZR2, this is my next favorite truck of all the General Motors trucks they built, this particular model, exactly as is. Yeah, you know, if, if an off-road truck were a movie character, right, uh -huh. this would be James Bond. I, I think so. Indiana Jones. Right. James, well, James Bond with a pickup truck? No, Indiana Jones. <laughs> All right, in, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, Andre, yeah. Andre probably says Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh, for No, no baby. Andre, what are you it, saying? Would, it would be the baby Yoda of trucks. Oh, baby Yoda. Oh, God. We're just, <laughs> All right, well, let's talk. Lucas with, is loving us right let's now. Let's talk with the movie reviews. Let's talk about fuel economy because that's what these trucks are about. But yes. You, but before we. You mentioned that, Nathan. Uh, I don't hear the diesel. Dude, this engine is remarkably it's quiet. It's really quiet. You hear it when you're. Ex when you Put, well, as Roman likes to put it, you give it the beans. You hear it for just a second, then it drops off. Like you're gonna hear now. Yeah, but just a little bit. Yeah, there's no clatter though, right? Used Not to much. Be, used to be used to hear that kind of diesel. It, the old analogy was like a percolator, like a coffee percolator. Right. right. It doesn't sound like that anymore. Um, before we get to the MPG, Nathan, let's do the zero to sixty acceleration. And keep in mind we're a mild sea level, and there are four of us in here, so. It's going to be leisurely. Yeah, but our cameraman counts for like three quarters of a guy. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, he's like 120 pounds soaking wet. It's very swelt. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop so that this thing resets. Come on. There it right, goes. Here we go. All right, now I'm merging onto the highway. See, look at that. It just really kicks in nicely. I love this engine. Yeah, leisurely. Yeah, but 10.8 seconds with four people in the vehicle, and on top of that, slightly uphill at a over a mile above sea level. Can All you of those things. Show that uh, we can't quite see it from here. Yeah, there you go. Here you go, Andre. 10.8. Okay, we are, how fast are we going? We are doing 60 miles an hour, Nathan. Okay, so let's uh, see how the volume is. We're we doing that here, right? Yep. Wow, between 65 and 67. That is remarkably quiet. That is a very quiet vehicle. That's right up there with certain vehicles from Germany. So I am impressed with that as well. This is one of the quietest engines. And it's interesting, uh, once again, Ford, which isn't here right now, they're really good at quiet tuning, but I think that GMC is really starting to get it down. It's a quiet vehicle. The only air, the wind I'm hearing is off the mirrors. I like these mirrors, by the way. Yeah. They're not great. But they're good for just regular driving. I mean, they're not they're not towing mirrors. And what's really incredible is actually we have the sunroof open. Well, mm. not open, but with the slide, yeah. the slides. Yeah, yeah. so you can hear a little bit of air off that. Exactly. Well, shall we try our snarfs? Oh yeah, good looking. All right, yeah, let's go snarfs. So we're in navigation, voice command. What would you like? Navigate to snarfs. One moment, please. I'm on it, searching for snarfs nearby. I'm oh. finding more than one match. Because it may take you a while to choose, please do so manually from the display. That was, that was, that nice. was freaking awesome. <laughs> that really worked. I thought it was not going to do it. No, that was actually really awesome. And Roman is deliberately vague, kind of like a grandparent trying to tell you to yes. you know, do the lawn or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's really out there. And for this vehicle to figure all of that out without using a phone, I'm impressed. How, how is navigate to snarfs vague? Because it's navigate to snarfs. Snarfs could be any number of things. It could be a person. It could be a call girl. It could be, you know, some sort of crazy place. It's snarfs. It's a weird name. So the whole thing about that is they figured out, okay, it's a sandwich place. He wants me to go there because he said navigate to snarfs. 
I that was really that, good. That was like a Google. Um, yeah, that's yeah, it's exactly similar what I'm to very, to yeah, it's, it's a absolutely. Level thing. So very impressive. All, All right, right, let's look at the Hula Girl. Yeah, well, I gotta, yeah. I gotta say that was certainly one of the. It best was pretty results. good. Yeah. All right, Hula Girl. Now we're all gonna rate her from one to ten as we get on this rough part of the road where we see how much she dances. The more she dances, the worse the ride. So here we are. We're getting into the rough part. Okay. Now keep in mind that this mm. does not have an air suspension like. I'm hitting the, these potholes on purpose. It's not so bad, really. That's nothing, dude. Nah, she's she's cool. Even in the back seat, I can um, I can say it's pretty comfy. Yeah. So ten being best? Oh, ten being worst. That's okay. the most dancing. One being no dancing. So what do you give it? Uh, I got to be honest with you. I think it's a three. All right. You, Andre? I would say three, even from really the back. Good. In the back seat is usually more bouncy. But I didn't feel uh, discomfort. Andre, we're talking about steel suspension, right? Uh, we're talking about regular leafs in the back, yeah. coils in the front, nothing special. Yeah. No. This one doesn't have air, okay. uh, so it's not riding on air. And it also has Rancho shocks because this is an off-road setup, right? Well, the off-road setup actually yeah. might be benefiting it because usually yeah. it's a little bit softer. I think so. Yeah. Um, so three is really good. Uh, Roman? Yeah, I'm going to give it a three as well. And I'm going to ask you guys a question. Where is the Ford? Andre, where so, is the Ford? So, yeah, so, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, we noticed, and actually you guys noticed as well, and emailed us, that the 3 liter V6 Power Stroke Diesel F-150 was not on the online configurator. Um, I called Ford, um, and they said that at that moment, uh, it was still not EPA rated, but now it is. And it was kind of a glitch in their uh, online system, so it wasn't actually showing as an option. And according to them, it should be available now. You could still order it and you can still buy it, but it's not available for us to test. So that's the story. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? That's a little weird. That's a little, that's know, what are you gonna do? That, we try to get all three of them, but uh, once again, you know, you can only get what you can get. Now, how much is the option on the Ford Andre? It's pretty expensive if you wanna go diesel F-150. Yeah, it was, it's around 4,000 bucks on the Ford, but it matters which trim level you buy it at. It's available at XLT, also Lariat, and also higher trim levels. Um, so it um, averages out to about 4,000 um, bucks. Here, it's uh, 2,500 bucks over a V8, uh, 5.3 liters. So it's the same price as a big 6.2. So you have to choose, is it a 6.2 gas or three liter diesel in a GMC? And Andre, I think we, um well, we teased them long enough, Nathan, so let us know the fuel economy on the GMC. 24 miles per gallon combined. Whoa, that is good. Now, if you think about that, 24 miles per gallon combined may not sound like much to you guys, but this is a freaking half-ton truck, and that's 22 city and 26 highway, and driving the older, not the older, but another version of this truck with that you know same engine, I was getting almost 30 miles per gallon on the highway. You know, the bigger number that I think GMC is proud of is... 500 plus that's how far you can go on a tank full yep you know that that is a long way to go and especially if you're towing you know that is a good number because obviously you're going to cut down on the range when you're towing but if you can go over 500 miles without filling up dude whew, i mean that's yeah, that's fantastic. yeah guys that's good but it doesn't compare to the ram uh, if you get, but let's let's wait till we get there. We'll get to the Ram. We'll right, talk about but the Ram. GM is offering a smaller fuel tank in their diesel half-ton trucks, which is around 22 gallons. And as that is, uh, because they also have to incorporate the uh, the DEF tank as well. But 22 gallons, guys, it's not a lot. But no, it's really not. I mean, my old Pathfinder has about that same size gas tank. Yeah, but let's get into the Ram because that's where actually. Uh, at the end of the video, we'll also tell you the pricing, which is surprising, right? It is surprising. And, you know, by the way, these things are really closely matched. Really closely matched. All right, well, let's find out just how closely matched they are. Indeed. All right, let's show the Ram Rebel for 2020. It's available now with the diesel as well. In other words, it has the same V6 power plant, but it's completely redone. Yes. And now, I mean, its output is impressive. Yeah, it's a third generation eco diesel. Let's show it. Can you pop the hood? Yeah. You so, like that, guys? I've been taking Russian. <laughs> That's really good. And this is, has their power hood, they call it. So they've got, well, a couple of fake vents here and a little, um, um, actually, logo right here, a little badge that tells you it's a diesel, but it's very discreet. It's not in your face. Uh, but what is in your face is this engine cover, and it says 3.0. 
liters. And this is their third gen. There's, uh, there's so much room in here. Look at this. <laughs> yes. So in the front of the engine, I mean, the engine is tucked in way by the firewall. Yeah. By the passenger compartment. And the rating is 260 horsepower. Right. And 480 pound-feet of torque. So it's got more torque but less horsepower than the GMC. Yes. And it's not a straight six. It's obviously, like we said, it's a V6. And it's made it to an eight-speed automatic. Uh, the GMC engine is backed up by a 10 speed. 10 speed. Yeah. Interesting. So very different philosophies, but basically the same displacement size yes. and very similar power numbers. Yes. Uh, and overall, this is an off-road truck. I mean, you guys probably saw us testing a Ram Rebel with a Hemi for an entire year. It was our project truck. Right. But this is basically their off-road version of the truck. So let's walk around to the tires. If you can, you can close that down. Yeah. Um, it's also using a Duratrack. So you saw the Duratrack on the GMC. This is also a Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack, which is a really aggressive all-terrain tire. But this is a little higher. Um, Ram lists it at about a 33-inch tall tire versus a 32 in the GMC. But also a little suspension lift. It's a little higher than the regular Ram. And this one is riding on air. So air suspension right here. Roman, what do you got back there? I got something really special. I got a barn door, dude. What? Yeah, check this out. Look at that. It's a barn door. So wait a minute, are you telling me it's uh, t uh, the pro tailgate on the GMC versus the barn door on the Ram? Hell yeah. Okay. You this know, is the new battle. This yeah. is the new battlefield right here, unique tailgates. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, these barn doors ever in the real world. This is the first time I've seen them at auto shows, but this is the first time I've actually seen it on a truck. So what do you guys think? Um, barn door versus pro. What's your favorite? Which one's more useful? I, I have my answer, Nathan. I like that one better. Yeah. The, the reason this is okay for like your regular everyday person who actually has to put groceries or something like that in there. But I like that because I'm such a gimp that it makes it a little bit easier to get into the truck. This one makes it a little bit difficult for me. So there is no center step. They also have an optional step. Yeah, they have an that, optional that, one. That would be in this area. This truck doesn't have that well, right we got to show them the Pro. So yes. Let's go show them the but, Pro. But so. I like this better Yeah. before we show the Pro because better access to the bed. Yeah. Right? And you can also have a hitch here and the tailgate won't hit it. Yeah, that is one real positive thing. Also, you get RAM boxes if you want them, and these are really cool. I, I think that out of everybody who's been doing them and everybody's been copying them, this is still one of the best examples of having this extra utility. All right, let's show them the Pro. Yeah, so. come on, check out the Pro. Bro. And by the way, in case you guys are curious how this works, I'll, I'll explain. So you can also either uh, activate the little control on the top, in which case you get a regular tailgate. The entire tailgate. Yep, that's so dampened. Or if you push on the bottom, you get the barn door. So you've got two ways to open it up, and I yep. think that's important to but note. There's a question. Open yeah. the little one up. Yeah, open the little one up. Yep. Now, what if I do this? Watch out, camera guy. Can I close that? No! Boom! Failure. Okay, let's check out the other one. Oh, wow. Okay. Two buttons, folks. Top, bottom. Top one. Lilla. Now, I like this because this is good for, you know, wood, plywood, stuff like that sticking out of the back. And because of this angle, you should be able to keep it in there unless you accelerate really, really hard and then it's projectile if it's not tied down properly. <laughs> but you could solve that, right? You could solve that by... Okay. Go about, boom! Which, by the way, has kicker speakers and a control for Bluetooth, which, by the way, every single time I've tried to use this, Roman, it's never worked. All right, let, let never me, worked. Hold on, let me show you the way you're supposed to use this. Oh. Okay, so let me close this thing. Let me close this thing. All right, let me hit this button over here. Come on. All right. All right. Let me, okay, now we do this. Okay. Uh, Where's that button again? See, that's the problem. That's why I don't like this tailgate. You can never find a button. You never know what to push. Uh, I mean, versus the Ram tailgate. Uh, want me to do it for you? There. I won't open. No, the other button doesn't work. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. You can, try I, can, it. I, can I show you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Andre, demonstrate. Uh, Andre, so, you go ahead and do it. So we've had to fix right. uh, Roman's VCR before with the blinking light, so this is nothing new. Uh, you do the magic, Andre. So you have to push two buttons in a quick succession. That's the secret behind it. So top, bottom. Whoa! No. The look, secret. Look, top, bottom, <laughs> bottom. Top. You guys broke my GMC? Bottom. Bottom. 
I give up. This is, this is, this is done. <laughs> One last try. <laughs> Oh, there he goes. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. When somebody likes something, they figure out how to use it. Otherwise, they get angry and yell at their son to reprogram it. So, this is a much easier thing, even with me being gimpy. incapable, gimpy. I can get into this tailgate really easily, and there's more. Because we can move this up, as you saw before, and there's a little grab stick over there for big wimps like me. And what I really do like is the fact that this is multi-configurable. So that is really helpful. But then again, not everybody needs to climb into the back of their truck. Yeah, you got this handle too. Yeah, that's really handy handy. Look at this. There it goes. Oh, easy. You gotta admit, that's pretty easy. Yeah, it is pretty easy. And if you don't want to do all the, you know, pushing buttons, you can also use the open step. Yeah, there is the side step, which you missed completely. <laughs> Folks, this is live TV. This is so. So we're gonna. But, but Nathan, what happens? Do you have a hitch here? What happens if you have a hitch? Well, you're not tell. gonna have this thing down anyway for the hitch, now, are you? Because this is for steps and to step in and out. Now, granted, if okay, if you do have the hitch, that's why you have the side step that Roman missed for it. I, I gotta tell you guys, a part of me really just misses the traditional tailgate <laughs> that just flopped out like a dead fish. Bam! You're open. You're good to go. All right. Oh, you know what? <laughs> you can't put this down at the tailgate. Is all and look, close. look, Nathan, your beloved tailgate. Show your, show your finger. Show your finger. No, that was from something else. <laughs> <laughs> what was? Okay. Oh crap! It has to go all the way down. To really. I think we go for a ride. Now. <laughs> I think we need to go for a ride. Dude, this has a gigantic sunroof. It does. This is much bigger than the GMCs, which only is about that big. Yeah, it's, this not, one. it's not one touch though. It's actually it is two one touch. touch. Yes. Oh, there you go. I touched it like 15 times, Andre. Well, you can only just Story one click. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, what do you think of the interior here? Look at this screen, 12 inches, right? Dude, it's much better. You yeah. know, I, I, I'm, am I the only person who's not a big fan of a massive screen? Look, I like the fact that it's here and it's so clear. The graphics are great. I just kind of prefer having all of my information up here and not having to look down for all this. All right, Grandpa. I know um, it's hard to see. Okay. Focus with those <laughs> with my old eyes. Yeah. I can't. You know what? Well, you know you want to say that fine, but it's just my own personal thing. I know that other people much prefer just having the screen up here and then having controls down here. But to be said, this whole layout is really good. I even like the way they did this. Just everything is so nicely packaged. Can you close the rear window, the rear hatch window, please? Oh uh, yeah. It's a button right on the top of the console. That's open, and the other way, that's closed. But sorry, there was a lot of noise coming in. Okay, got it. All right. I opened it by accident because there are four buttons here. I'm There's great. a lot of buttons. And they all look the same pretty much. Yeah, see, that's the other thing is that there is a lot of buttons in this truck. And then on top of all those buttons, which are on here as well, this is the heating, air conditioning controls and all that. All this is here. Then you also have these buttons, and then you have these down here. I personally do like one thing, that all the four-wheel drive stuff is right here right there for you. You don't have to reach around and hit something else and twist the knob up here in order to make it do something. It's all here. Yeah, because this is, of course, the off-road version of the 1500. Right. Uh, and I think we've got, guys, every conceivable bell and whistle yes. that you could get from Ram in this truck. I mean, we're talking air suspension. We're talking, look, every one of these buttons is full, right? Right. We're talking the nicest interior. We're talking the biggest sunroof. Heated steering wheel, heated the, seats. I mean, the fanciest tailgate, right? Yeah. The Ram boxes, yeah. everything. Well, to be fair, the GMC also had a lot of those features, but there are a couple things that this truck has that that one doesn't have. The main thing is for off-roaders, this truck does have one thing that really sets it apart. What? Electronically locking diff. Yes! You can hit a button and lock it up. Yes. Unfortunately, the GMC doesn't have that, and the thing that drives me crazy is they do have one, available through General Motors, but you can only get it on their little Chevy Colorado. Yeah, so we've got the old G80 on the, the GMC. GMC yeah. Yeah. Right, and I just, it's just, it's okay off-road. It's, this is much better. I love being able to select it. Yeah, it is a good feature. And it's funny because they do have it in the Colorado Canyon Twins, right? Right, 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 right. So why Bison as well. Why, why don't they put it on the on the full-size truck. I yeah. don't understand why. It's, it's, a, it's an argument that doesn't make any sense when it comes to a vehicle like this, which is really built for off-roading. Now, this is my only gripe with the interior. It's a beautiful interior, but this fake carbon fiber look here is, is just unnecessary in my book. So, right, well, once again, I'm going to come to a complete stop, let the solo deal reset itself. This is going to be slow because there's four people in here. We're a mile above sea level. Solo deal resets. Okay, here we go. Merging onto the road, onto the main road. Oh, a little bit of kick there. 
coming up to highway speed gently and leisurely 55, 56, 60. There we go. Wow, uh, a lot slower than the GMC. Yeah, why don't you show them, Andre? I got to merge. Got it. Yep. So we got 12.56 in the Eco Diesel Ram and 10.8. Guys, that's a huge difference, almost two seconds of difference. And Roman, how was uh, kind of the throttle response in both trucks? Uh, there's a lot of lag there. Both both trucks have a little bit of lag before anything happens. I think off the line, this initially kicks in a little bit faster, spools up a little bit quicker. But the, once the GMC gets going, it's like a freight train. It just goes smoothly up, 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 up. And obviously that end time shows it. All right, let's see how quiet or not it is in here. Can we go on right speed? Yeah, put it up, up here too, so we're at the same place. Let me speed up a little bit because we were doing 60 before. Wow, that's quiet, dude. Mm -hmm. Between yeah, 61 and 63. Yeah, it's actually yeah. quieter than the other truck. And we have the whole shade open still. Yeah, just yeah. like in the other truck. All right, let me uh, find our way to Snarfs, huh? I'm going to say the same words, gentlemen. Okay, we're already on. Navigate to Snarfs. Tuning to satellite stars. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I was expecting. <laughs> Let's try again. Should I try one more time? Yeah, try one more time. All right. You know what? Uh, I will try one more time. I'll say the same thing. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Navigate to Snarfs. No state heard. Searching your current state, Colorado. Searching for address in United States. Please say the street number, street, city and state. If Cancel. you want to search Cancel. in another country, Can say enter country. Cancel. Cancel. Please cancel. This is more of what we usually get, isn't it? Cancel. Yeah, this is just like what it's like to <laughs> be married. Um, <laughs> Nathan, so, can you turn my heated seat and... Uh, off. I'm just boiling it. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. I'm trying to, uh, Are you guys in the hot seat? Usually, what Ram does, and actually FCA does this, is they turn on uh, all the heated seats. Everything. And, and when it's below a certain temperature outside. Yeah. Uh, and I like that, but not when I'm doing a video. Yeah, well, it feels like we're in Chernobyl or something like that after a while, man. It just really heats up because of the radiation vibe. All right. Time for the hula girl to do her hula -ing. Now we're on a regular road setting. We're not on the off-road setting for suspension. So this is just its regular setting. And I'm going to look um, for the potholes to hit. Yeah, just like before. Yeah, I'm trying to hit potholes. Not the usual method of driving. Here's a and last truck got a three, which is really good. I'm going to give it a little bit more. She's dancing a little bit more. It's quieter in here, but not yeah, gentler. I'm, I'm yeah. going to give it a four, guys. Hmm. How about you, Nathan? You know, I think I might be up there with, yeah, you know what? Four. Four. You, Andre? Andre? So what, what my butt dyno is telling me is that there's a little bit more motion, but it's also cushioned because air suspension. It's dampened. It's, it's, it's dampened and cushioned. Um, I'll give it a three still from the back seat Always perspective. Always got to be different, don't you? You know, I, I think there's not much between them. They're, they're really close, but what surprises me is that this is a much more expensive high-tech suspension versus the one that's on. Now granted, they're both off-road suspensions. The one that's on the GMC is part of a two-inch well, lift. Are you saying that ranchos aren't high-tech, Nathan? <laughs> I never said that publicly. <laughs> All right, so what's the fuel economy? That's the next question, right? People? I can tell you right off the bat. Okay. 24 MPG combined. So we got the exactly the same combined MPG. But the thing is, is that this is a different truck when it comes to its uh, highway mileage versus the Ram. So this vehicle gets 22 miles per gallon city. No, this, you got the wrong one here. You got the Sierra. That's why it looked a little bit like the same. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that. Just making sure everybody's on their toes. Okay. So this one's 21 miles per gallon city, but 29 miles per gallon highway. So not as good in the city, but a little bit better on the highway, and thus the same combined MPG. But you know, you know what Ram is doing uh, versus General Motors. What's that? Andrew? General Motors with the EPA. They uh, know if it's an off-road truck and they derate their off-road trucks just slightly on the highway. And I don't think Ram is doing that. Remember with our Ram Rebel, you know, it had that rating for a regular V8 truck, not a Rebel truck that's higher with bigger tires. So I think oh. that's also part of it. Okay. So what you're saying is this is rated potentially 
like a regular 1500 diesel yeah. and not like the Rebel diesel, which of course is taller with bigger tires and heavier and, and all, heavier that, and all stuff. that stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. And Andre, what's the size of the fuel tank in this guy? Uh, you can get a couple of options, but I think the biggest tank, which is uh, I think is in the truck, uh, 32 gallons, guys. So that's 10 gallons more so yeah. than the one that's in the GMC. So that's gigantic. So yeah, that's probably what, over 600 miles of range, I right? would say that's easily, yeah. Well, I, I went to the program, guys, and they were saying something very interesting to where um, like almost a thousand miles of range, in theory, if you had a two-wheel drive. You see what I'm saying? And if you were hypermiling, which yes. none of us really do, right? And you know, no review of the Ram Eco Diesel <coughs> can be complete without actually mentioning what happened with the last generation, right? The last generation um, basically uh, got fined by the EPA for having, uh, well, according to the EPA, they said that, that, that Ram did not meet the standards for pollution, in, in fact, exceeded the standards. Ram came back and said yes, but only when the truck is accelerating under certain conditions. In the end, uh, Ram got fined. Owners had to go in and have the truck retuned, which made owners unhappy because it increased the turbo lag. Uh, it was quite a mess. Right, so the this engine is the evolution of that engine. Yeah, and Ram will and, say it's different. And they say it's different. In fact, I think, they, well, Andre, they were saying, what, 60% of the components are different or something like that? Or like up to 70%. Up to 70% yeah. of the components yeah. are different. And, you know, you that the losses sustained from the last one uh, are more than compensated for in this one. Yeah, and, so they'll say they basically redesigned the engine mm, to comply with all right. government regulations. Correct. Yeah, and this engine has both the high pressure and the low pressure exhaust gas recirculation. When I was there at the program for this uh, truck, it's a very high tech, very, very kind of advanced engine actually. So time will tell boys, but what we will tell right away is should you buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. So let's uh, park the trucks and let's give them our ratings. Think about them, please. I already know what I'm going to do. I am thinking right now. All right, Nathan, how much do these bad boys cost? This GMC Sierra, it's not what you expect. It's MSRP is $65,800. Okay, and how about the okay. Ram? The Ram, MSRP, drum roll please, $70,880. Wow, that's a lot of money for both trucks. You know, you can get a pretty substantial HD truck, which is also gonna be diesel for the cost of these full-size trucks. Yes. All right, Andre, buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. Both trucks, please. Ram Rebel Diesel, lease it. I love the truck, but when you consider the cost with all the options and also that it was slower on, in our test, uh, lease it for the Ram, buy it, buy it, buy it for the AT4. Uh, I just love that straight six engine so much. Uh, and the off-road truck combination, great. How about you, Nathan? Can I say buy it for both? Sure. All yes. right, buy both, but the one I like slightly more than the other, the GMC, I really like this GMC AT4. I really wish it was the vehicle you bought instead of the damn Chevy. All right guys, I'm with Andre. I say lease the Ram and buy the GMC. That's a gem of a three liter engine. And guys, let us know in the comments below if you like these more, what, free flowing? Is that a good word? Instead of mistake ridden reviews? I like free flowing. I like raw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And remember, go to back to TFL. Of course, you like raw. Truck for more news, news, and real world truck comparison reviews. See you guys next time. Raw. Mm -hmm. Raw. Mr. Hugo there.